Okay, so in this episode we're going to talk about covalent bonding. And in this first slide, um, the first thing you need to know about covalent bonding is you need to learn about valence electrons and how that deals with electronegativity. So hydrogen's the first atom you see because it only has one proton. And hydrogen only has one valence electron. And a valence electron is the electrons in the outermost shell that are used to do bonding with other atoms. Now to simplify the drawn model for larger atoms with lots and lots of electrons, um, we're going to only put the atomic symbol or elemental symbol in the middle to represent the nucleus and then how many valence electrons they have on the outside. So in this case it's hydrogen and its atomic symbol is H and it only has one valence electron. Now a simple way to determine how many valence electrons an atom has is to look at the periodic table and to look down the columns and for the first two, column one, column two, it's one valence electron then two. You skip the transition metals because those can have between three through 12 valence electrons, and then it goes three through eight for the rest of them. So there's something called the rule of eight, which is basically, um, you wanna have va eight valence electrons in the outer shell, and that um, completes an outer shell. And um, hydrogen and helium only need two to fill it, because they only need two for that energy level, but the rest need eight. And you can see this later when we get to more examples of bonding when you'll see they need eight to complete it. Now electronegativity is the measure of the ability of an atom in a chemical compound to attract electrons. And what that basically means is that you want to fill that um, shell, you want to fill that electron shell, and you do that by either taking electrons which is in ionic bonding, or in covalent bonding, it is you share it with very similar ele electronegatively charged atoms. And when looking at the periodic table, the way you determine electronegativity is um, if you go from left to right down the row, it is higher electronegativity because there is a lower atomic radius because you have more protons um, acting on the electrons in the same energy levels. The atom to the left is lithium because it has three protons and the atom to the right is boron because it has five protons and when looking at the number listed below the atom that represents its electronegativity and for lithium it's 0.98 and for boron, it's 2.04, and that means that boron has a higher electronegativity, and this is seen because boron has more protons and the same energy levels. Now, if you go down the columns, you have decreasing electronegativity because you have increasing radius and increasing energy levels acting on the atom and that causes um, the electrons that are at the farthest outside point to be easily stripped. Okay again lithium is on the left and this is represented by the nucleus is just the atomic symbol and sodium is on the right Na and that's represented with the atomic symbol and the reason, if you look at the bottom of the atoms, lithium has 0.98 compared to sodium 0.93. So lithium has a higher electronegativity is because sodium has more energy levels and a larger atomic radius than lithium does. And that's because you have a lot more electrons um, around. And electrons on electrons are actually like two attractive forces and if you compare them to magnetism they actually repel each other 
and that causes the radius to be a lot bigger. And that causes when you're looking at atoms and looking at things that attraction and repulsion, it's a lot easier to separate the atoms at the very edge of the structure of the atom. Here's an example of a um, covalent bond. So again, like I said about the rule of eight, you have oxygen. It has six valence electrons and it just needs two more. Hydrogen has only one, yet it only needs one more for each hydrogen atom. So what happens? They both share the electrons and they now have a complete structure or um, complete shell around every single atom. Okay, finally I want to end with why covalent bonding is happening and occurring in this situation. So hydrogen and oxygen have small differences in electronegativity, that's the first one. Because if they had a big difference, it would either be a polar um, covalent bond or it would be a ionic bond. It would just the electron would just be stripped away. It wouldn't be it wouldn't be shared ele electrons. And then another thing is that this usually occurs between nonmetals, and they're both nonmetals. So hydrogen and oxygen are nonmetals. Transition metals don't usually occur in covalent bonding because the electronegativities are drastically different ha half the time. So that's what you might have to consider. Okay, so next time I'll talk about ionic bonding. Then I will talk about how to name covalent and ionic bonds.